Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here. As today, I'm sure of it, this is the last part in this Back to Basics Hand Tools series. What is this all about? This is all about learning how to strive for excellence. It's about learning how to be disciplined in our work and constantly aim towards precision, towards making something that is great. And that is exciting. It is an honor to bring you along for the journey. I hope that you enjoy this. Let's get straight to it. We're gonna pull that out and we are going to attempt a domed pin. Uh oh. So when we glued this up, we Vaselined it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Let's take this out of our jig. Maybe a little light touch with a hammer. <laughs> I didn't catch that. My ruler fell in my coffee. Ah, oh, yuck. There we go. Yes! I am way too excited about that. <laughs> we got it. We got it done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that right back in. There we go. But why, Alec? Why would you take the pin out and put it back in? Well, it's because I actually don't want to dome the pin right now. I got that all in the wrong order in my head. And I like the little extra bit of strength that this is having. Not that that's going to change much to the danger and the risk of what it is that we're about to do, because we are about to file this copper spacer, and that's going to put enormous stresses on the bond. Uh, and so I'm rather petrified about this. And yes, we will be scratching the wood and the steel, and we're just going to have to deal with that and finish it. Re-finish it, rather. So. Here we go. Woo! Ah, that's scary. Easy does it. Easy does it. Oh boy, I'm gonna be here a while. Copper spacer has been filed. I have begun the oiling process on the handle. And now it is time for the doming of the pins. And this, this is not an exaggeration for me to say, but this, one of the last steps, is probably one of the easiest moments for me to completely destroy this. Doming pins, peened, domed, riveted pins on a handle? I've never done it before, but as far as I understand, it is a stunningly difficult undertaking. The hope is that what it adds to the knife is stunningly beautiful. It is with the stunning risks often that you end up with a stunning success, provided you don't have a stunning failure. I've had a lot of stunning failures in these uh, in these projects. But anyway, as you can see, the Coca Bolo is looking beautiful, and when we get some bronze in there peened over, it's gonna look even, even better. So we better get some practice in. I'm gonna file this square. Ugly duggly, so this is cut to 28 millimeters. This is a 25 millimeter block with a hole in it. I also have put a slightly domed, polished head on it to start with. We're gonna drop that in the hole, make sure that that bottoms out onto the anvil face itself. And we're gonna take the tools that we made up in yesterday's episode to begin the doming process. Now again, I'm trying my best to go off the Nick Wheeler tutorial. Highly recommend you check it out if you want more educational stuff about this. But I think the general principle is you take these domed punches and you work all the way around the outside, gently bringing it down. Got a little teeny hammer, let's get to it. I need more light, I can't see what I'm doing. Here we go. Oh, this is difficult. 
I think I've got way too much material. Way too much material. We're gonna make a shorter piece. Right, attempt number two. This is now one and a half millimeters instead of three millimeters. We'll see how it goes. Oh my goodness, that is cool. Oh yeah. That is the coolest thing. Oh, I like domed pins. Check that out. There is one problem though, and that is that this is currently extremely rough. It's not good. It needs to be a polished pin. It needs to look good. So we're gonna put some painter's tape over the top of it, and we're gonna see if we can sand it, and we're gonna learn how to do that. We've got it polished. It's now time to cut it to size. So I'm hammering the pin in with some leather over the face. <laughs> it is beautiful. Oh my goodness. See, this is worth the effort. That's worth the effort. This is why a domed pin is so valuable because that just looks beautiful. Still rough, obviously. This will get refined, but that's the idea. That's the whole, that's what, it's, that's what we're looking for. Come on, there we go. All right, so we got the pin out. Thankfully, I didn't damage it pulling it out. We have a slight little scribe line that we made flush with the wood. We're now gonna measure one and a half millimeters up from there, and we're gonna do the same thing that we did to prep the other side, which is we're gonna put just the slightest polished dome on it before we poke it through, and we get this all set up to dome it in the handle. And so now is the time that we put our pin doming jig to good use. Our dome is gonna fit nicely in here. The knife will be held securely. First, however, we're going to masking tape up all the areas of the knife that we don't wanna damage. Okay, so we got masking tape on the one side. We'll punch another hole and we'll place that over the pin that we are about to dome. So we've got just enough poking through. In with the knife we go. We'll tighten up our blade. Make sure that's rock solid. There we go. And now we can bring this up to support the pin as well as possible. We've lock nutted it down. It's not going anywhere. We're all set up, it's all tight, it's all locked in. And as they say, there is nothing to it but to do it. Oh my goodness, this is terrifying. Why do they say that? Ah, okay, <laughs> Woo! no going back. This is it. Ah, come on. Whew. It's only like 10 days work, let's go. We're doing it, <laughs> we're doing it. Oh, I just hit the wood, look at that. Oh, that might be bad, that might not polish up so easily. Need to make myself a little groove to run in and then it'll get easier, I think. Oh, yeah, now it's a little easier. Okay, so we've made a little groove and I'm running in that groove, working around the periphery of the pin. Okay, here we go, now it's forming. Oh, yes. Steady. Easy does it now. Okay, there we go. We got it roughed in. I did miss a few times though. Would you look at that? Yep, we missed a few times. Oh yeah. Miss hit, miss hit, miss hit, miss hit, miss hit, miss hit, scrape. Yeah, 
that's not ideal. I don't think it's all bad enough. I think that we will still be able to succeed despite it with some careful sanding to make sure that we get a nice finish regardless. But first, I want to flip this over so that we can true up the other side in case we've done serious damage to it. Even though it's been supported by a cup, we, we could have damaged it. So we're gonna have a look at that. Oh, man. It looks perfect. Not today, Murphy. <laughs> you won't get us this time. So we're now taped up. We've got this little block of wood with a slight chamfer on it. We're going to start polishing that pin, getting all those hammer marks out of there. I got so close. I thought I was done. I brought it to a 4,000 grit polish. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that little dimple still in the material. Back we go to 400. There we go. I just made a domed, riveted pin. That's unreal. Oh my goodness. So here we go. This is how it's looking so far, but of course, this is no good. We can't have a black oxide finish here and a sanded finish here. So we're gonna use some nail polish and we are going to apply a resist just like we applied a resist when we acid etched that Damascus steel Chris with the keyhole integral handle. Just like we applied a resist there, we're going to apply a resist here so we don't get the copper in the solution and mess up the solution. And so we don't mess up the wood by getting that in our black oxide solution too. First things first, we'll do some electrical tape, degrease it and start getting a nice Rimmel 60 second super shine. And start getting our nail polish on it. Okay, it's now ready for the black oxiding again. So here we go. Thank you so much for watching this series. I am so thrilled that I can share with you the journey of pushing each day here in the workshop, the limits of what I know and what I'm capable of making and sharing the journey with you, sharing the failures, sharing just what it takes to hopefully make good on those failures, sharing the incredible education that this craft is giving me and hopefully inspiring you guys to get out there and make your own stuff. This has been extremely exciting, trying to focus on the details and working through all the failures that I have made for myself in this project. It's been a fabulous journey and I'm honored to have had you here watching. If you're new, make sure you hit subscribe. If you've enjoyed the series, I am thrilled that we have a new t-shirt design and this means a lot to me because this project meant a lot to me. I learned so much. I had to push through so many failures that I made for myself. I had to teach myself a great deal about pushing on through and trying to do a good job. As I say, I am honored to have been able to share this with you. And this t-shirt commemorates this process just a little bit. I'd love it if you would go and grab one at my website, alexdealshop.com. As always, an utter pleasure, an utter honor to be able to bring you here in the workshop. And I cannot wait to see you tomorrow on the next episode. We've got lots to learn. It's a pleasure to share it with you. Thank you. <laughs>